Hello and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Dragon's Dogma 2 and we're doing another ranking video. Today's is going to be for the best bows in the game. So these are weapons that can be used by the Archer class and of course by the Warfarer class. So if you want to be someone that fires a bow and arrow, this video is for you and we'll be ranking them based on all of the stats that I consider when ranking weapons. So I find it to be a pretty solid ranking. Uh, before we dive into the meat of this video and get to the ranking, I just want to remind you here and now we're just above 80,000 subscribers. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers, so if you get any value at all from the video, of course, likes and comments are super appreciated, shares are phenomenal. But what I'm working on right now is subscribers. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and you get any value, whether it's entertainment, educational, informational, or just something to listen to, uh, please show your support by subscribing to the channel. Not asking for money, just subscribe. With all that being said, let's dive in to the video and get to ranking these bows. Keep in mind, I will be ranking them all, or you'll be I'll be showing you the stats and talking about the stats at uh, a very high level. I'm over level 120. I think I'm level 127. Uh, and all of these weapons are maxed out. That being said, the ranking remains true regardless of your stats and regardless of the stats of the weapon. So let's just dive on in and start off with number 10. And keep in mind that while we are doing this, that uh, like I said, I'm ranking the top 10. There are at least 17 bows in the game that I have isolated and analyzed, and these ones are the 10 best ones. So even at number 10, it's still significantly better than many of the other bows that you can use in this game. And number 10 we have the veteran's arc an iron bow of impressive make heavy in the hand but unmatched for balance this one has a, st a strength stat of 284 magic of zero strike strength of zero or slash strength of zero strike strength of 100 and knockdown power of 150 giving it a composite score of 106.8 this one i think looks quite cool this one i used quite a bit when i was leveling up my archer vocation because uh it was one of the better bows that you can grab early i think i purchased it at the weapon shop at the border outpost so i think that's the first place i found it i'm sure it can be obtained elsewhere in the game but that's where i got it so pretty cool looking bow it's very solid stats especially considering how early in the game you can get it that's the veterans arc at number 10 coming in at number nine we have the repeller bow a bow wrapped in the hide of a divine creature its sting is most keenly felt by chimeric foe uh this one for stats has a strength of 300 magic of zero slash strength of zero strike strength of 100 and knockdown power of 190 giving it a composite score of 118. This one uh, t just looks really silly in my opinion. I love the, the limbs, how they're wrapped in this like hairy, furry hide type thing. Uh, I guess if you're going for a hunter type build and you really want to emphasize how much fur you have on you, this one's good for that, I guess. Uh, I mean, obviously, stat-wise, it's a fairly good bow as it made our top 10 ranking list. But yeah, uh, just really goofy looking in my opinion. So that's number nine, the repeller bow. Let's move on to number eight. And number eight, we have the Dinistrid, a bow fashioned by an elven artisan using rare plant fibers reinforced with metal. The added weight lends power to the draw without hindering flexibility. Stats on this one are strength of 365, magic of 0, slash strength of 0, strike strength of 100, and knockdown power of 180, giving it a composite ranking, or a composite score of 129. So a pretty big step up from the repeller bow. This one is, uh, I believe you purchased this in the Sacred Arbor from the weapons dealer there. I kind of like it. It looks like a regular elven style recurve bow, but with a bunch of spikes all over it. So it's pretty interesting looking. I like this one. I, I got nothing to complain about about the appearances. You wouldn't want to, I guess, rub your hand up and down it so it would make oiling it a challenge, I guess, uh, and drying it. But anyway, uh, kind of edgelordy looking, but it's all right, and stat-wise, it's quite good. So that's the Dinistrid at number eight. At number seven, we have the Darkening Storm, a bow engraved with the form of a dark beast, especially ruinous to griffins. So yeah, if you want to go hunt some griffins, this bow is pretty solid for that. Uh, the Darkening Storm has stats of 337 for the strength, zero for the magic, 0 for the slash strength, 100 for the strike strength, and the knockdown power is 210, giving it a composite score of 129.4, so just slightly higher than the Dinistrid. This one, uh, I think looks pretty dang cool. It's a very, very cool looking bow. Love the red accent, uh, the red with like the kind of dulled bronze accents all over it. Looks pretty, pretty nifty. I like this one, and stat wise, pretty good. So the Darkening Storm is number seven. At number six, we have the Predator, a bow crafted from iron and heartwood, lauded for its exceptional accuracy 
accuracy, it is most devastating when unleashed upon harpies and their fell sisters. So if you want to hunt some harpies, or any type of harpy type enemy, the predator is a great bow for that. Stats on this one are 343 for strength, 0 for magic, 0 for slash strength, 100 for strike strength, 220 for knockdown power, giving it a composite score of 132.6. So, a good step up from the last one. Uh, aesthetically, I like this one. It's definitely interesting to look at. It's got, you know, the two layers of bow, so I, I would be interested to shoot a weapon like this and see how it draws, how it fires, how much noise it makes. All of those are interesting to me as someone who uses recurve bows in real life. Uh, but pretty cool looking. Uh, I like the fantastical elements of it, but it also does look like it would work in real life. So pretty cool. Like this one. The Predator takes the number six spot. At number five, our halfway point on our top ten list, we have Dragon's Blink, a longbow worthy of its namesake. It lets fly arrows infused with draconic power. So uh, this one looks as though it was made out of, I guess, the horns of a dragon, because that's what it looks like. It looks like it was bound with metal in the middle, but uh, pretty standard look to it other than that, considering it's such a dragony bow. It actually doesn't look ridiculous style-wise. Stats on this one are strength of 439, magic of 0, slash strength of 0, strike strength of 100, and knockdown power of 190, giving it a composite score of 145.8. Uh, so, again, nice and Powerful, interesting enough to look at if you're going for a dragon type build or end game thing where you want to emphasize your dragoniness. Uh, this one goes good with that. So that's the Dragon's Blink at number five. At number four, we have the Revenant Whale, a bow crafted of monster hide and sinew, resulting in a well balanced composition. The arrows it looses find their quarry with astounding ferocity. So that's exciting. Strength stat on this is 475, zero for magic, zero for slash strength, uh, 100 for strike strength, and 220 for knockdown power, giving us a composite score of 159. This one's pretty dang cool. It kind of reminds me of the Daedric bow, or maybe it's Maybe it's the Dragon Scale Bow from Skyrim, but whatever it is, reminds me of a Skyrim Bow. Very thick and chonky to look at. Pretty cool, uh, style-wise. You can see that they are going for the, uh, monster hide on the top that kind of looks like a scaly thing, and then the sinew beneath it. It's a cool-looking bow, and stat-wise, obviously quite good, considering it's ranked at number four. But let's move on to number three. Coming in at number three, we have Dragon's Rancor, a bow worthy of its legendary namesake, as responsive and powerful as a dragon in flight. Stats on this one are 514 for strength, zero for magic, zero for slash strength, 100 for strike strength, and 215 for knockdown power, giving it a composite score of 165.8. So, another nice step up from the last one. This one, I believe, is purchased from the uh, Dragonforged guy after you've completed the game, so uh, using the Worm Life crystals, you can purchase this one. Uh, pretty solid bow. Uh, it looks interesting. I like how the, the part that you grip, the handhold or whatever, uh, is, like, framed by big bronze dragon mouths. I don't know that I would love that. I feel like I'm not sure where you're supposed to set your arrow on that, but it doesn't look like on top would be great. So anywhere underneath, I imagine you rest on your hand, you'd be ripping up your fletchings as they grab those teeth. So I wouldn't do it like that. Other than that, looks pretty cool. It's a very thin bow with uh, spiky arms, uh, or limbs, I should say. Looks pretty neat. I like that one. But that's the Dragon's Rancor at number three. Our runner-up at number two is the Medusan Spellbow, a bow of untold origins, clearly not of mortal make. It greatly increases stamina consumption, but felling foes with it earns the wielder hefty experience. So this one is great for leveling up because you get a big XP boost when you're using it. Uh, as far as this one goes for stats, 505 for strength, 0 for magic, 0 for slash strength, 100 for strike strength, and a knockdown power of 268, giving it a composite score of 174.6. So, another step up from the last. Uh, this one, pretty dang nifty. It's obviously iconic considering the uh, Gorgon. I don't know why they call it a Medusa in the game. Medusa is the name of the specific Gorgon. But anyway, uh, I digress. That's a pet peeve of mine. Anyway, considering it's the first boss that you kind of fight in the game. I like this one. It's it's pretty cool. Plus, it doesn't hurt to have an XP boost. So, the Medusan Spellbow, pretty interesting looking. It's obviously got a lot going on, but for a fantasy bow, uh, that works for me. So that is our runner-up at number two, the Medusan Spellbow. Let's move on to our best bow in the game. And so our best bow in the game is the Hydra Husk, a bow fashioned from the skin of the legendary Hydra. It resembles a coil of conjoined serpents whose peculiar torso rests comfortably in the hand. So this one has a strength of 562, Magic of 0, Slash Strength of 0, Strike Strength of 100, and Knockdown Power of 268, giving it a composite score of 186 and making it the best bow in the game. As far as appearances on this one, I, I like it. It looks interesting. It's asymmetrical because the top has the Hydra heads and the bottom is just the tail, so I guess it's got an interesting enough look, but I don't hate it. I like it, actually. Uh, I don't think I've ever come across a Hydra in the game, so that's interesting. 
interesting enough. You know, maybe they're gonna add it. Maybe I just haven't found it. But it's a pretty cool looking bow, and obviously stat-wise, it's the best. So that is our top 10 uh, ranking for bows in Dragon's Dogma 2. I hope this video was useful or entertaining or whatever. If I've missed any bows, definitely let me know down in the comment se section below. I have personally found and analyzed 17, so if there are any more than that, definitely let me know and where to find them so I can take a peek at them. But that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.